Welcome guys to episode 17 of video game. What the heck? I don't know how to count. This is 17, right? Well, whatever number it is, we're continuing off where we left off from last episode. This is a Kerbal Space Program. I'm just gonna go with 17. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program episode 17. Today, I I wanted to I wanted to fly this thing to Lath because you know SSTOs. I I mean, where else would I put this thing? Well, let's be let's be completely honest here. Also, I just really want. I I've never actually like been to Jewel before, so like I was like, all right, let's just have fun with gravity assists because I can. I'm a professional. Anyway, here's that satellite I memorized. I memorized, mentioned last episode. So what that does is uh, it basically uh. It shows you if there's, like, uh, gas rings around the, uh, thing that you can, like, pick up. So, like, hydrogen, deuterium, I think even liquid helium's in there. Yeah, there they are. So, it's argon, liquid hydrogen, liquid helium-3, and liquid deuterium. Uh, reason I wanted to check for those is, uh, if it would be worth it to make a craft that could theoretically collect those gases and use them to just, like, refuel the nuclear reactor the fusion reactor on the back of our mothership, which is uh, liquid deuterium, liquid helium-3 at the moment. Also free hydrogen. So we can get two of the three resources, and you can't actually mine helium-3. So we might have, a, like, a craft that just, like, stays in orbit and just, like, collects things. I don't know how that would work, but I, I think it exists. So maybe that'll happen at some point. I don't know when... But, um, maybe it'll happen at some point. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, so here we are coming in for, uh, Passive Lathe. I decided error breaking was an idea. It was a bad idea. So, um, I'm not going to be the first one to say that I, um, I did this completely wrong. So at this point, what I should have been doing was actually raising my periapsis, and for some reason I thought, lower periapsis must be better because you're going slower. No. Re what you do when you orbit a planet is you, you technically, it's like, if you, it's like rendezvousing with like literally every other, any other craft in this game, you're essentially killing your velocity relative to it, and once you actually manage to do that to a certain extent, you enter orbit. In real life, it's a little more complicated than that, but in this, in our simulation here called uh, Kerbal Space Program, that's basically what you do. So what I should really be aiming for here is trying to get a higher periapsis with apoapsis around where Lathe is. That's what I should have been aiming for, and I was just like, well, if it's going, if the periapsis is lower, Th then it must be going slower. And if it's going slower, then I must be able to orbit Lathe easy. No. That's just not how that works. Guys, don't do not do don't do what I do. Anyway, this craft is here. It's detected things. I think that's all it had to do. So, um, yeah. Fun. That was a probe that I'm, I'm not even sure I needed. But, uh, also this, um, the Mark 1 version of the Pike SSTO. Don't worry, guys. It's fixed now. But I'm also recording this after I made this. So, uh, yeah. So this, this, this SSTO has some problems with it. Um, one of them being that it literally can't generate power. Now, I know it has, like, those four little solar panels that kind of, like, pop up. Those, those are not, well, they're solar panels, yes. They, um... They generate like 0 0.001 power per second to altogether or something because like it doesn't work at all. We're way too far away from Kerbal for those tiny solar panels to be providing any sort of reasonable amount of power generation. So uh, the only way I could actually turn this thing was with RCS. I couldn't even like do a burn without RCS. This is why reaction we I, there are reaction wheels on this craft. I can't use them <laughs> because um yeah. Good job, self. You done goofed. <laughs> uh yeah. Other things about this craft, it um uh what was the other thing? It was that I don't uh, no, it has an antenna on it. Uh, I suppose... No. 
What was the other horrible thing about this craft? Something. So, there was something. One, I, I kept smashing it into Lathe's atmosphere and hoping that that did something. It, it didn't do anything because... We're going 3,000, and if I actually try to break at that speed, then I just explode. <laughs> so, um, that's how that, that's about how well that went. Um, yeah. Good job, self. I'm adding RTGs to literally everything after this mission. Like, actually, here I just bit the bullet and was like, I have Delta V. If I burn retrograde for long enough... Here's me, um, balancing out the fuel tanks, actually, um, I thought that would be necessary. It actually was. I ended up crashing it, like, twice before I actually did this. Otherwise, it won't fly straight, which is weird, because it flies straight on Kerbin, but I'd, maybe re-entry is different. I, I don't know. This is not a very well-made SSGO, I don't think. I... The Mark II is better. It's just... It's not great. The Mark II is actually in the thumbnail, so you can see some of the uh, improvements that are going to be made. I'm not going to mention them yet, because we're not there yet, but we will get to that. Here, I'm just trying to make sure we end up on land. There's me, I'm um, just kind of like, kerbling my way into the atmosphere, because, um, it's a word. This thing is kind of hard to fly, because, um... It's, it has a tendency to want to fly backwards if you, like, give it any reason to do so, which is, um, it's not fun. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. It's, uh, it's not fun. I quick saved right here. Uh, I did not mean to quick save right here. But, uh, I did. So, uh, when, uh, I, I fumbled here. And I, I couldn't get out of it, so, um. Uh, we, we might have crashed this SSTO, and I, I then proceeded to say, hey, wouldn't it be, like, really funny if I, like, made a completely unnecessary rescue mission for no reason? So I got a Kerbal out and had him plant a flag, and the flag says, uh, flag says, oops. I'm creative, okay? Shut up. <laughs> anyway, so, uh... Now we come over to this sun, where we're, uh, we have to prepare for the actual rescue SSTO, which is another Pike SSTO, but this is the Mark II, so it actually, like, works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the defining factor between the two. One of them works, and one of them does not. Uh, so here we're going to actually be using that docking port to get back. The reason this thing actually has RCS is not, well, I guess it's so it can, like, actually dock in space, but it's also so it can dock on the surface. Although I forgot the one on top, so I just, like, didn't put it on the top. I forgot to change it back, I don't, or I put, no, I put it on the wrong side in the last episode. That was a me problem. Oopsie. Anyway, so, uh... Basically, how this works is, uh, Smart ASS, Smart Assist has no idea how to do things. Thank you, Smart Assist. Very cool. Anyway, we basically just line the thing up and then, uh, drop it. And then it, and then it docks. Simplicity! That's, um, that's my, uh, that's the catchphrase for this thing. Anyway, I transferred fuel into those tanks again so that we'd actually be able to, like, fly this again because it kind of needs to fly again i'm not actually sure how i'm gonna get fuel here if i keep using those fuel cells to to get power because like I, I need fuel to like use the thing i suppose if i keep fueling the thing at the, the mothership then it's fine but like it's not gonna be there forever like that's not the point it's not just supposed to be there forever. It's supposed to, like, be able to move around. So, yeah. Anyway, here's, uh, here's us after, uh, moving all the nuclear fuel into it for the second time. We're basically just gonna rendezvous with the, uh, mothership. Uh, yeah. That's that. Uh... Sorry about that. 
had to sneeze. Why is my recording choppy? Uh, that's because I have it in timeline view. Thank you, uh, video editing software. Very cool. Appreciate. Appreciate that. Here's the rendezvous. Go around, load it in, and there is that. Gotta get our little Kerbal out after moving it towards the, uh, station because... We need to, like, put the dock... The, the way that the probe works is you have to take the... the that way it's, it's able to attach to literally anything, but you just have to make it attach to literally anything. I should just put junior docking ports on here. I can build them. That's a thing I'm capable of, but, you know. I just don't. Yeah. Don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway... Here's the new Mark II Pike SSTO. Uh, it cannot be completely filled up with liquid fuel or monopropellant. Can be completely filled with oxidizer, because that's a thing. Uh, but uh, luckily, if you uh, notice the name of this SSTO, if I can find it, or if it's even on the screen somewhere. <laughs> uh, this mine, this might, yeah, well, yeah, there, I just died. I'm not going to repeat that because I am lazy. <clears throat> it's a mining SSTO. It can mine the ground and make its resources mine. That was funny. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so this thing, it's, it's, it's pole. Paul? How do you pronounce this moon? Is it pole? It's like moon versus mun. Or maybe it's mune. We'll, we'll never know. We'll, we'll, maybe it's actually mint moose. I don't, I, I don't know. Anyway, so if you notice, those solar panels are actually able to, like, function. So that's pretty fun. Also, this thing decided that it was a little child on a playground and just wanted to slide over the entire ground like it was made of cheese. That made absolutely no sense, and I'm aware of that. Please don't judge me. Anyway, so the modifications that we've made to this one are... One, there's a mining thing in it. Two, the solar panels actually function. Three, I put a um, I put those little like winglets on the front. I... They are both pro and a con because they tend to make it easier in what well, we're... It, I've had mixed experiences with them. At one time, they were causing flipping, and the other time, I... They were the only reason I was able to, like, successfully use the thing, so, you know. That's a thing. Uh, another funny thing about this is the drill in there needs to be like moved down like an inch or something because like I can I can uh, reduce the suspension on the um on the wheels and then it hits the ground but if I increase the suspension then there's just like oh it's a ground where there's no there's no ground over here you idiot and it's like two inches anyway this thing has enough TWR that I can just like take off so I just did as you can see, we're just in the air now. Well, I mean, there's no air, but, you know. <laughs> there's me failing to, um, play the game. Good job, self. And because now we're full of fuel, because, um, that's how that works, we can just immediately go for lathe. Although, I was, I, I thought that was too easy. So I was like, hey, look, Tylo! So, um, got a gravity cyst off of Tylo because I wanted, I, I was like, I, I'd never done tons of link, uh, chained, like, gravity assists, so I was just like, this is my time to shine. I have no idea what I was doing. Like, honestly, I don't think I needed this many gravity assists. I could just use, like, Tylo twice to reduce my orbit and then just, like, like, I, I don't know why I needed this many, but, you know, I was having fun, alright? I was playing the game, and I was enjoying it, so that's, that's, the, that's what matters, right? I'm an inspirational speaker now, haha. -ha. <laughs> anyway, so we planned a maneuver node at the Tyloperiapsis, and we got an encounter with Val, which is probably 
one of the only times I'm gonna visit this place unless I actually get bored and go back. That was pretty cool. I kind of wish I'd gone there, but it's a little bigger, so never really got around to it, unfortunately. Tylo is actually about as big as Kerbin, which I mean, you look at it and you're like, really? I thought Jewel was as big as Kerbin, but like, nope. Jewel is huge. It's like really big. So, yeah. Anyway, here's uh, here's Val. I'm, I might think I burned here for some reason. I think it was to get a lathe encounter. Or, no, it was just to um, uh, reduce my orbit. I don't remember. What am I doing? I got a Tylo encounter for some reason. Okay. I swear I was just doing this for fun or something. Like, I honestly don't remember. I mean, I'm not complaining that I had fun, but like... It, it, it's one of the reasons this is a half hour freaking video. I think this is the longest video that I've made so far. I they're not they're not gonna be this long going forward. I plan to I actually start. I haven't streamed in like a month. I want to stream again. Streaming is fun. I can have audience interaction, and I I think I have, I think I have the ability to like actually do that now so that's fun i don't know my my voice wasn't great and then i was just like well videos are getting views so you know but like streaming is fun and it's easier so i can get more this was meant to be a daily series and i've missed like um like two weeks of videos like bruh i'm throwing anyway here's laith I decided, I think, not to, I don't think I burned here. Did I? I don't, I don't remember. I think I left to do like the dishwasher or something and then forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I honestly don't remember. There's a fade I put in, alright. Uh, so this is what that lathe encounter actually looks like. Yeah, here's what I did. I just era braked at this point because I knew I was going slow enough that I actually could. That's what I did. That's what I did. I can just tell my voice is going up and down. I'm... I'm... Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, I, I failed the first time again. Not because I was going to crash, but because I, I could have made that a better re-entry and I didn't. So here's the successful one, I think. I kind of flipped around a bit, but... I mean... I mean, this thing isn't necessarily very stable, and I set all the control services to, like, maximum deflection. So, eventually it actually did work. Which I'm kind of surprised at, if I'm being honest. Like, this thing has not been very good to me in terms of, like, cooperate. And anyway, I flew- oh god, what have I done here? Oh, I had to turn around, I think. I was flying in the wrong direction. Anyway, this thing, I then decided to, like, just, like, jet airline over there. Like, welcome to, uh, to Phage Falcon Airlines. Today, we're gonna be flying at about Mach 3. <laughs> Why? And we're gonna burn through all of our fuel in about, uh, 12 seconds. So, uh, good luck, guys. Anyway, here's our landing. Uh, I then proceed to taxi the thing because uh reasons. I had to taxi it for like three kilometers. It was kinda crazy. You should have been there. Wait a minute. You are there. Anyway. <laughs> There's a geyser over there. Um, if you noticed it in like the three seconds that were over there, it was kind of on the right side of the screen. If you want to go back and check on it. Maybe that'll give me more watch time. Anyway, Lathe has, like, sir, I think that's just breaking ground, if I'm being honest. But, uh, here we are. We've arrived at the wreck. So now we can, um, lower the suspension so that I can actually, like, use the drill. And then we can, uh, fill her up with liquid fuel. And then, oxidizer. 
and then mono propellant because that's all you need also there's an antenna that's fun filled everything up and now i think i uh yeah i uh disengaged the landing gear in the front that allowed the nose to kind of come down and i could actually like climb on top i forgot to put a ladder on this so that's why i had to do that <laughs> So, uh, guys, don't forget ladders. They, like, they're important if you want to climb on things. Don't, don't do this. I had to spam the F key so hard to get the Kerbal to not fall off of the freaking thing. It was actually kind of funny. There's that geyser again. Anyway, there's the Kerbals. And, uh, here's our, uh... Our launch I uh, enabled a uh, close cycle there because I don't actually think I didn't actually think we need any close cycle to uh get to lathe orbit which we actually did not end up needing so you know I just have some extra oxidizer which you know never hurt anyone maybe we need like extra kick on some other body and then we'd be able to um get off a little easier so get into orbit really also, I added lights, and they're, like, realistic. I looked at, like, a real airplane chart, and I was like, red is on the right. Green is on the left. Wait. Did I say that back? To feel oh, God, I feel like I said that backward. I could just look at the recording, because the recording just has the lights in the correct positions. But, um, I had it backward on, like, all of my previous SSTOs. I had the, um... I had the... The blinky blinky strobe lights on the back, which they're supposed to be facing backward on the back on the tail. So I put two on the two tails. And then, uh, oh, green's on the right. I'm an idiot. How have I, how have I managed to do that? Oh my god, I'm throwing. I'm throwing. Anyway, off of this topic, I, uh, we noticed, uh, we got some new orders in from the, uh, from the Kerbal Space Center, they they noticed a large uh, anomaly at the edge of uh, Jules' SOI. So uh, this new crew of uh, six, I believe, are going to go investigate that at this point. That's right, this series now has lore! No, it doesn't. I mean, kinda does. But it, it's more like headcanon, and less of like, this is actually hard-coded into the game. So here's a random Val encounter that I got. Mainly just so I could get, like, enough altitude to do a Tylo encounter without having to do, like... I, I suppose this was actually more work than just burning prograde, but, you know. What the heck? Why not? Anyway, so there's our uh, Tylo encounter. Yes, it's a dual Tylo encounter because I'm a nerd, and yes, I intended it for it to be like that. Definitely planned it out. I did all the math... All of it, don't ask, don't fact check that, I'm I'm sure I'm a trustworthy news source, don't, don't even worry about it, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. There's another pass of Tylo, I don't know, doing low passes of Tylo, it's, it's oddly satisfying. So there's the anomaly at the end, at the edge of the, uh, I've highlighted it here. We're just gonna get another Tylo encounter and use that to our advantage, because, uh, Tylo is great for doing that kind of thing. You just, like, you get near it, and it just kicks you off to, like, wherever the frick you want to go. It can even kick you down, which is like, thanks, orbital mechanics. Very cool. Anyway, so here's the disturbance. It's, uh, it's a large space-time anomaly. We, we're, not, we're not quite sure what it is. Also, at some point in time, my probe that we launched in the beginning of this episode, like, kicked itself off of Tylo, and now it's in that huge orbit, if you're wondering what that was. So that's a thing. Anyway, so, uh, there's a wormhole at the edge of, uh, uh, Jules' SOI. And, uh, the crew here is gonna go investigate it, because, uh, what could, what, what could it be? The, the Kerbals don't know what it, what it is. They are, they're gonna get a little bit closer here. And then I, um, I thought this part needed some more drama in it, so, um, so I put some, like, dramatic music in, I think. Is it here? It is here.
What is this? Where are we now? Oh, wow, that's immersion breaking, isn't it? Wow, that's... Okay, I'm good at cinema, shut up! <laughs> I don't know why I thought I needed to do that. Uh, there is not just one star system in this playthrough. There are two! I know, right? Big reveal. Also, we can't talk to the people in Kerbin. So that's fun. Anyway, um... I don't know. Drama. Dr dr cinema. I'm good at... I, I don't know. Anyway, so, uh... I downloaded a new planet pack for this, uh... For this playthrough. I figured KSB2 had some interstellar travel, so, um... I would add some interstellar travel in, too. This is, like, the stupid cheap version of interstellar travel. We're just using a teleportation key instead of, like, um... <laughs> instead of, like, brachistochrone trajectories, but, like... I want to see what KSB2 does in terms of that. I I could try and just spend an episode burning, but like, what if I want to? What if I forget something? I just have a shortcut. <laughs> anyway, this uh. So this is uh this is where we're gonna start anew, start start afresh. I guess we could say that around this uh. Not a super Kerbin. What would you call it? Um, it's like a large. It's like a slightly larger version of Kerbin. Has a pretty, has a thicker atmosphere. I think it's like one point oh eight Gs, but like it's like two point two atmospheres, so it's like twice as thick. Also has a. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but it has a thin like ring around it. It's like this. Uh, this planet pack. Like they went. They did not have to go all in on the visuals, and yet they went, like, all in on the visuals. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Also, there's a moon. Hint, hint, that, that's a moon. Anyway, that's going to be it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to watch more of my amazing content, then uh, make sure you get subscribed, ring the notification bell, and if you're, you, you just can't get enough of my content, then check out my main. Also, there are links on the screen. Click those. You can get even more things. And uh, stay tuned for more uh, updates. Bye.